me. I'm back. I know you missed me. It's me. It's me. It's me. Yeah, it's me. It's on. It's on. It's me. Hi, it's Jake. What episode number is it? I can't be bothered to keep... Ah, I never can remember right at the beginning of the thing when I talk to you at the beginning of the thing, but I do know that it's been a while since I talked to you, but not as long as it was the last time that I didn't talk to you because um, I'm feeling better. Hey, I had a great time in Austin, Texas. If you came to any of those shows, I can now at this point express my sincere gratitude to you. Thank you. That was such a fun time. And I think we, I think we both had fun, you and I. Um, yeah, so thank you, and if you didn't make it to that, come see another show sometime. Go to my website, jakethis.com. See, the podcast is called Jake This uh, Podcast. I've got a website, jakethis.com, and I'm at Jake This on Twitter, all that stuff. So you go to my website, you can see I'm going to be coming up to uh, Seattle to Laughs in Kirkland. It's not in Kirkland anymore, though. Now it's back in Seattle. i got the wrong address on my website. Go to my website, but don't trust everything you see there. Uh, uh, so I'm coming up to uh, Seattle to laughs. I'm coming to Des Moines to the Funny Bone. I'm coming to Denver, the Comedy Works. I'm coming to Governors in Levittown, uh, New York, Long Island. I'm going to be at the Hollywood Improv. I'm going to Zany's in Chicago and Rosemont. I'm going up to San Francisco. I'm going to be in Irvine. I'm doing a lot of things. So go to those places and uh, click those links and do that thing. And this week on my podcast, this podcast... The thing you're listening to, what's about to happen to you? I'd like to answer that question. Thank you for asking. And a um, uh, quick update on the yoga pants. I ordered some of those yoga pants I was talking about last time, and they're not here yet. But I, I can't wait. I got sucked down a rabbit hole of yoga pants, and uh, this is how susceptible I am to marketing. I know what they're trying to do. I know when you go into the search engine and uh, they say, hey, check these yoga pants out. And you start looking at them. And then the next thing you know, you want them. And then you look at the men's. But they're not, I don't know. They're, they're yoga pants. It could be dress pants. We'll see what they're like when they show up. That's all I can say. Anyway, I ordered some of those. And so <laughs> check here for further updates. But this week on the podcast, my friend who Greg Barrett stops by. And we had a conversation. We didn't talk as much about fashion and pants as we usually do, so that's why I wanted to mention pants at the beginning, because I know he does like to talk pants. Uh, but he was over. Uh, we took a walk around the neighborhood, looked at some venues, uh, you know, and we've, we've, we're plotting. We're plotting a future together, he and I, where we'll do some live shows. And so I've got the sound system, which I showed him, and I said, look, my dream is to figure out a place where we can do some spontaneous shows either in the, you know, we can kind of take this thing anywhere that can hold 100 people. And um, so if you have a place like that, uh, you know, in the back of a bar or your foreign legion, foreign legion hall, I think American legion is what I meant to say. But uh, if you are part of a uh, American chapter of the French foreign legion and you've got a space where we can go, I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to entertain uh, any, uh, suggestions so we're lo we're looking right now to do things that we can drive to from here in uh, southern california but uh I'm, I'm also looking to try and get out on the road and do some more homemade -y to my regular comedy show is homemade is that i mean i make it at home i cook it up right in my brain and serve it up to you hot or pretty warm some sometimes it's not you know <laughs> i'm not part of that comedy thing where it's like i'm trying to ride a cutting edge and teach you a lesson i'm just trying for us to have a good time and if i say any true things at the same time while we're out that's a bonus. More power to us. More power to us. More power to you. It's not just about me. It's about us. And that's how I like to think about it. We're all in this together. Don't forget, we're all in this together. We got to help each other out inst instead of cut each other off, which seems like that is the plan. You're driving around half the time. People act like it's a competition. I mean, and, and, I, and I'm in Southern California where I know there's not that many people watching NASCAR. But people act like, oh, they got to don't let you in because they got to get where they're going. And if you know, you take the opposite attitude and really try and help that other person out. Pretend it's your mom. Pretend I'm your mom. Pretend I am your mom. OK, now that's a whole kettle of fish. Um, but uh, pretend that uh, you're trying to help each other out every once in a while. And then before you know it, you'll actually will be helping each other out. And then the world is going to get to be nicer. But that 
is part of why I had my friend Greg Barrett come over today, or yesterday. It could be today to you. It's today to you because you're listening to this right now. So this is today. There is no time but the present. The past is uh, history and the future is a mystery. The present is a gift. I That's a thing that I knew that I didn't know that I was going to say right now, but uh, I got into it. We're in the present, so this is happening to you today, but it happened to me yesterday. But who knows what day that'll be by the time you're actually listening to this. So or everything's relative. E equals mc squared. Don't forget that. And c is the speed of light. That's constant, which is hard to believe because everything's relative except for the speed of light. <clears throat> Einstein, too bad he's dead. We could ask. I got questions. I have got questions. They'd probably be so boring. Me asking Einstein questions. Man, how bad? What if you could wake him up? What? <laughs> You know, this is the, the now we're back to the go, go have dinner with the famous person and just what kind of a social burden that would be for uh, you to have dinner with your dream person. Because Einstein, let's face it, I'm, I'm doubting. I might be able to ask him a couple of good questions. He would probably be super excited that he was alive again for a minute. Like, holy crap, it was dark. I was alone for so long. Or that's assuming that they're, that he's not in some kind of paradise with uh, Marilyn Monroe. Um which that's that's where I like let's let's all picture Einstein and Marilyn Monroe kind of getting into some pre like looking across a nice table with, with the remains of a delicious meal and they've each still got a about a half a glass of wine to go and they just they're into it they can't wait to see what's going to happen next that's how I like to pa uh, picture Einstein right now and so he's immediately winked out of that to here in my little office poditorium where only yesterday I talked with Greg Barrett, and now I'm asking Einstein some questions about the relativity and the speed of light. <clears throat> I doubt I could understand the answers. That's the problem. That's the problem. Let's say your dog could talk for just 30 seconds, and it, it, it asks you all these qu questions. You might be able to understand the questions, but the dog's not going to be able to understand the answers. And that's poor Einstein. I feel sorry for him. But uh, none of the, oh, I just made all that up. Einstein is still finishing that glass of wine with Marilyn Monroe. But right now... It's time for us to listen to me <laughs> talk to Greg Barrett. And uh, I just let me just say thank you for listening to so far. I mean, you we're seven minutes into this thing and uh, <laughs> I'm the only one talking. I, well, I can only I'm assuming that you might be talking the whole time. You might be having retorts and rejoinders to me. And uh, I can't wait to download your podcast. Uh, shoot me an email. Let me know where I can do it. Uh, okay, here we go. This is I'm going to play the theme music. We're going to listen to Greg Barrett. I'm going to be back at the end. That's how we used to do it before it got to the point where I was just sitting alone crying in my underpants trying to get my shit together to do another episode. But that, that time, that's in the past. I'm not saying it's not coming back. It comes back before, you know, that's the thing. You feel like you're on a roll and you're not going to be crying in your underpants anymore. And then you're back at it. If I could play the guitar, this would be a song and then we'd all be happier. But here, here's this. This is it. It's me and Greg Barrett. Here we go. I think it's on. I didn't have any breakfast. I was just thinking about that. I was like, did I have a breakfast this morning? Normally I get up and get a breakfast. But I made one for, I made one for True. Well, yeah, children, children yeah. have to eat breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she had a waffle and some bananas. And, Do you have um, a waffle? We have to have a waffle maker to make waffles. Yeah, I didn't make waffles. That's a, I, I toasted a Belgian waffle. Oh, so it's a to it was a toaster so like waffle? A, yeah, it's like one of those fancy ones from, uh, um, you know, Trader Joe's or... It's a good. It's a good waffle. But yeah, it I wasn't trying like to a, take away from. No, no, no. But you know, they don't taste as good. A waffle really is. A waffle is a is a just off the griddle thing. Yeah. Not off the griddle. It's like a toasted donut or something. You know what I mean? Like it's a pastry treat. It's not as good as it could be. No, not as good as it could be. Yeah. All right. I don't think the waffle gets enough play. I think the pancake gets a lot more play. In well, terms pancakes of, are easier because you just need a pan. But if you want to have waffles, you got to have a waffle iron, or else you're buying the the ones that you're talking about, which are not. I mean, it is a waffle, but it's a yeah. it's a it's jacked with preservatives. I mean, that waffle got made and then bagged and then shipped. Yeah, and then it weeks wait, and weeks ago, was, the waffle was waiting Possibly. for you to come and get yeah, it, yeah, yeah. like a yeah. puppy in a and shelter. And then it got frozen for a while because we weren't going to eat it right away. I mean, it yeah. was a. I mean, that waffle was meant to be eaten seven or eight months after it was born. 
you know, it well, was I hot, think, and then it wasn't hot for another seven or eight months. I bet that those waffles also, though, they're not meant to be, like, if you ate it right off it came, right when it came out of the waffle extruder, whatever yeah. the, the thing is, it probably would taste weird. Is because it called it, an extruder? I don't think so, I but I like know. that yeah, word, like and I wanted to say that, it. That waffle extruder. Yeah. But if you ate it right when it came out of that thing, it would probably taste weird because it's not meant to be, it's meant to be frozen, like the, the things that right. make it so you can... Freeze it? Do all the things you want yeah. to do. I mean, there it's a Belgian waffle is what you know it, it, it claims to be, mm -hmm. and it's uh, so it's roundish and uh, it's got a lot of cinnamon on it, and um, it's all right. You know what I mean? But everything frozen cooked that's bread tastes like oh, this was just frozen. It never feels like it wasn't frozen. Yeah, I guess I'm so used to bagels out of the freezer now that I, I they're they're okay to me. Well, once a lot you toast of people them. do that. Yeah, once you toast them. But then now you've changed the whole bagel experience, too, because a bagel really, I think, is best just, uh, you know, just like warm right out of the, just chewy. You know, well, you know who you would be. like is Murray Valeriano, because he... I like Murray. Yeah, he can't believe that when I went over to his house, he promised. He said, I got bagels. I was like, great. He doesn't even have a toaster. He has one now, but he didn't have oh, a toaster. Man, really, because... Because he just likes them. He just thought that you would like them. He thought everybody just likes them just right out of the bagel bag. Now you and you and True. True loves it lightly toasted, please. If I could have everything toasted, I would almost. I like it just a little brown and crispy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, mm -hmm. the, True has that OCD thing where the sour, where the, uh, not the sour, but the cream cheese has to cover all of the circle and then, but not fall into the middle. So then she fingers that, like she, so it's just exactly covered with a certain amount of mm -hmm. of cream cheese like watching her do it you know i just slather and then i drop the knife on the table and not put it in the yeah. sink and I, i've got some ritual it. i've got some tidy rituals i think i'm on the spectrum i think we're all on the spectrum oh yeah i have a little bit of that i have a little bit of that i actually prefer it i when i don't live in that if i don't if i'm not allowed to live in that comfort zone i go the opposite direction but I like to have a handful of things. I like to be tidy and have less, you know. I've been married to Belinda now for 14, almost 14 years. And I still cannot get used to the way that she cuts up a piece of fruit, like an mm -hmm. apple. Mm -hmm. She will just slice off the edge of an apple random. Like she doesn't know, like there's a center cylinder core thing and you want to deal with that and get the seeds out, but maintain the minimum amount of apple meat loss and but right she, but she'll trim it down and there'll be this weird shaped thing that's got some of the core in it and it's very frustrating to me but i can't she doesn't want to do it the way that i do it and i've stopped trying to get her to cut the apple the way i want to cut it but i haven't stopped wanting to that's the real problem. So that's probably that's the that's the actual problem right there. Yeah, I really you haven't been able to say it. You were quiet for long enough that I finally figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I'm not able to have these kind of conversations when it's just me, but it takes another person sitting here, and then I can talk. And now you, I know you can get it out. Yeah, the problem is not that she won't cut the apple the way that I want her to cut it. The problem is, is I can't let go of wanting her to cut it that way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not allowed to use any of the knives in my house, so that's where that happens. I've 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 stabbed myself on a number of occasions and taken pieces of my finger off. And so I was like, like when I start to cut a bagel, she just please God no, just let me just put all the sharp shit, just leave it alone, just ask me, ask me to cut it for you. So you have to ask her to cut it. I I don't usually because I don't mm -hmm. was I'm not a child, but I but she would just prefer to do it, and so there are certain things I won't cut like an apple. She peels them for the kids and does that thing. And I, I can't do that. I mean, peel, that's that's the end of me. If I wanted to commit suicide, I'd do it by peeling an apple. That's how I'd do it. I'd slip. I'd slice my wrist, and that's you be wouldn't the end be of killing it. yourself just trying to kill yourself. You would just know that. Look, no, if no, no, I try no, no. and eat if this I, apple, no, I know. If, if I try, I try and eat and like that, if I want to kill myself, I would be trying to kill myself. But rather than just stab myself, I would do it doing the apple because then I wouldn't know when it was coming mm -hmm. I wouldn't know which slice was going to be the one where <laughs> you know what I mean it's over yeah. right yeah so it's like I I know it's going to happen but not exactly when and there's that element of surprise and then people would be like did he kill himself or did he mess up with an apple I don't know if anyone's ever died cutting an apple mm. 
I bet they, I, I mean, it's a big world and there's a lot of people of, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, not. it's pretty. I probably pretty, not. Yeah. Well, there's always, you, you're using the wrong tool for the job. It might be somebody like that. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know? Right, I just figured I could shoot the skin off. Nope. Mary, yeah, it's not going to work. Well, I, I mean, thought maybe samurai sword. I was still keeping it knifey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you went right for the right gun. Right for the gun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, guns are dangerous. If you're getting a gun out to do any kind of food prep, but that seems like that's a not thing killing. Like a... That's not murder. I mean, there's you've got to murder these animals to be able to eat them. But can you see that, like in a movie where a guy, guy goes, you want to see me peel this apple? And then he throws it up in the air and he just hits it three times with a bullet and it spins it and takes the, just on the side, just bap, 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 spins it and he drops into his hand. And it's fucking peeled. That's a good scene. Doesn't really it defies a lot good. of logic. But it, it doesn't seem like it. I think that's a comedy that that that, that, that happens in. I don't know. Like Quentin Tarantino might be able to pull it off. You could do it in an independent film too. Like that was just the one. That's the money you spent the one trick on. You know, like you, that's your one CGI. All your money moment. went into that. Yeah. Because yeah. we would, if it was in an independent film, I would just do it here in your office, and then you'd be wondering why I shot holes in the roof of your uh, your. Yeah, well, I have, uh, I'm, I, I got to order those, you know, you're not supposed to bring a handgun in here. California, you can't just bring a handgun anywhere. But no. there are, but there are, you know, like Missouri, I think it, they've got to put a sign up. Like you can take your gun everywhere and, except for places where they put up a sign that says, hey, can't take your gun in here. And then that place you have to leave your gun in the car, which I don't understand why everyone wouldn't say you got to leave your gun in the car. I mean, I, I just feel like if you're offering laser tag if laser tag or movies or a bar or restaurant it's like no guns aren't going to make this better no uh uh no but those are all i mean you know yeah no no i so i'm always freaked out by that because there's a couple cities where we do stand up where they have open carry and you know i've uh i've seen a guy in there with a gun on and uh you know that just is so um i mean i don't you know every place has its own like when I was in Texas, um, the one night there was a table of guys and uh, uh, all had cowboy hats on. They were looked like they were looked like rodeo people, and they guy had a, he literally had a seat for his hat. And I said, "As as a seat for your hat?" And he said, that, yeah, "That's right." I said, "That is." I hope he paid because I know that's that's a seat that could be. Look yeah, did your hat pay? Says. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't. I hope this. Are we prorating this? And then I, uh, and then right next to him was this table of, um, I'm not kidding, Rasta lesbians, like dreadlocked and braided les- lesbian women. Wow. Now yeah, that's very, uh, I feel really, like that's in the, I, it's not bird I watching, it's picture. not bird watching, but it's whatever you're calling it. Yeah. You don't see that. You don't. It was really, it was very like, um. I was very like, oh my god, you guys are. We, I, look at this. I don't. I feel like you don't see Rasta ladies that often. No, you don't. You don't. And this was cornrows and dreads, and they were definitely gay. They, you know, like they were definitely. Well, I know they were, they were holding hands and stuff. So they, but they were. Yeah. Sometimes ladies will do that. You could tell though. They had a. There was like a. You, if you, if I really broke it down, there was like a, butch, to yeah. to non butch. You know, there was. It could be a culture thing, though, that you don't understand. Maybe. Because, but like, Arab, guy, Arab guys will walk around holding hands with another dude. Yeah. Then they're not gay. They're well, just like, hey, we're hanging. This is how we do it. Right. Well, that's because they're not allowed to be... I don't think they're supposed to be gay at all. So this is probably the best way to just sort of... Why don't we just let them hold hands at least in that way? Just make it a culture No, I'm thing. saying they're not gay. I'm saying you and I... No, I know they are All at once we're Arab guys. But I'm saying I think the custom exists because it was an agreed-upon thing where people said, look... We can't have gay. We don't have gays in our world. So everybody's got to do world. a little bit of a gay so thing. So if we just let the hand holding, make the hand holding thing actually a thing that guys do, then everybody at least does a couple it. Guys and then that way, that way, straight guys are kind of the cover for the gay guys who are holding it. They're That's getting right. a secret thrill out of it. Like I can't yeah. believe I'm holding this dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, exactly. But it's totally yeah. okay. Exactly. Yeah. So um, um, I'm still want to. I still want to peel that apple with a gun. I don't know where you go to practice that. But uh, no, uh-uh. never gonna have it. But if you it, find out, I'll come and watch. I think it's a good. I think I may have put it into a movie. I mean, I've written so many movies, none, and uh, so I don't know which movie I'm gonna put it in. But I'll put it in. It's just having ideas or conversations. I think I said this to the to the other day. Is like my idea of heaven is you know we just talk. We just sit in a room and talk about things that we're gonna do when we leave the room, and then we ne- we never leave. 
Right, right, right. We just right. sit around. Yeah, yeah. We just drink coffee. Yeah, and yeah, People yeah. bring us food. Yeah. And we take a nap, and we just keep talking about the things we're going to do when we leave. Ah, I feel like that would just be so great. Yeah, it's really and I don't nice. think there's anything wrong with it. People like to talk about, you know, as dreamers and they don't accomplish anything. It's like I'm accomplishing a lot right now. I'm enjoying. This is fun. But again, that's Do you part mind of the... that you're sitting in the terrible chair and I'm sitting in the good chair? Didn't even notice it until you said Yeah, that. sorry. I didn't. <clears throat> not a, I don't have a. I don't. It's like, it's like first class and coach. It does not make that much difference to me. No. You know? There was a moment where I was flying first class a lot, and then I started to fly coach again, you know, uh, and uh, I was like, I think at first I was like, oh, man, this is like a comment on where my career is going. But then I was like, no, I, I like this, actually. I don't mind it back here at all. And those tickets are, the, the difference is so great between the tickets, but not the actual event, unless you're flying to overseas. Then right. I do go first class or business, but other than that, I, you, that economy seat is just fine. I was at economy flying home from Chicago one time, and Henry Winkler was in the row behind me with his wife. Yeah. Now that is a guy who could fly. I mean, it probably was a situation where he wanted to go when he wanted to go, and they didn't have first class, is my guess. But, but he he was, you know, I felt good about myself and. I was in coach right in front of Henry Winkler, and I got upgraded the way where they go, hey, we didn't think it was going to happen when you got on, but now get up and come to the front. Oh, man. Yeah. That's amazing. I wish I had known Henry Winkler because I would have said, see you later. Oh, man. I would have said it anyway. Yeah. I, so, or I'll see you on TV. I'm going yeah. to go up here and still be this the same. This never happens that I get something better than Henry Winkler. But Henry Winkler may have just chosen it. I feel like if you've, you know... He might be a guy that's like kept the first dollar he ever earned. What's you know? he saving like, up for at this point? He's just practicing his, you know, his thrift or is putting that money into something better. Equanimity. Yeah. He's back there going like, I don't like this that much, but I'm dealing with it. And I don't know. I think skill. I think there's something. I think there's something to be to be said for just like it isn't really that great of a use of your money. No, that's absolutely true. It really is. I only, I only. And now there's TVs in the back, and now I mean, it's just this, it's just the seat space, and that doesn't bother. That has never bothered me, and or the overhead, and I don't use an overhead. I stick my backpack under the bag. Can um, you travel with just an over? I mean, just a tra- just. A, can you do a trip and not take a suitcase? What do you mean, not take a suitcase? Like just, like, like not, just my not pants. Check. Not check. Can you not check? I used to do that all the time. But then I got then I then we all got CDs and DVDs and T-shirts and that stuff. And so once it was like, okay, well now you're a, now you're running a, a junior achievement project after the show. You know, I have my own little small yeah. business. Right. It's, I have to check a bag for that. And so once yeah. I'm checking that bag, yeah, it's like I'm going to bring an extra pair of shorts and some flip flops and a pair of tennis shoes and all that other. Mine but yeah, went, I could I could easily go without checking. My a bag. after show business went to uh, immediately to a going out of business business. You had like a thriving after after show business. I had one where like everything's on sale. Everything must go. Yeah, it's got to go because I wasn't getting rid of them anyway, and I didn't like seeing the audience again. So I I like them. See, I like the me. people who come to the show. That's I like them too. That's why I give them the very best show that I possibly can, but I don't, I, I can't, I can't go out anymore. This may be trouble for our show that we're, because that's what we're doing. No, this, that's a this different, is, I'm, I'm trying that's to steer a different, us. that's a different thing, and I'll explain to you why. Okay, so the, here's, the, let's okay, talk about let's the talk show. Okay, let's talk about what we're talking let's, about. We're resetting, because okay. this is, people kind of merged into the middle of the, the, this conversation. Here's what which we were was, talking about, and I said, let's go start the podcast. We were actually talking about this plan that you And the point, of the, the point of you even coming over was that we were going to talk about this. Yeah, and tell them what, what you, ha- yeah, start it from so, the beginning. So I, got, I have purchased some sound equipment, because I had thought what I was going to do was, I mean, when I started doing this podcast, which has now been going on for a fucking long time. I know, probably longer than walking the room. And I still have uh, the, you know that, have you have you heard of the Thousand True Fans thing? Have you yeah. read that yes. thing? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, you know who made that? That's Lenny Bruce. Uh, well, the guy from, this guy who started Wired Magazine wrote a little essay about it. But did Lenny Bruce say you needed a Thousand True yeah. Fans? Yeah. Well, I mean, I also think he, yeah, Thousand, yeah, Lenny Bruce. Mm-hmm. Apparently, I don't know. I read that. 
I don't feel like he was a decisive, hands-down winner of the game of life. <laughs> you know? Look, Mussolini said, uh, uh, what did he say? I'd rather, he did the, Trump, the thing that Trump quoted. It's a fucking great quote, you know? What I'd did rather he say? have a, I, what is it? I'd rather spend a month as a lion than a lifetime as a lamb or whatever it is. Something yeah. like that or better, you know what I mean? And I was like, that's not a bad quote, you know? It's a horrible... You know, you don't know where any most of your quotes came from. You have no fucking idea. The guy said, yeah, messy, yeah, bed, that's, messy, no, head, messy bed could have been a racist. Maybe. Messy bed, messy head. Maybe he... Yeah, let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater than this Mussolini thing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just because the guy was a fascist dictator that they strung up and flayed alive in the street, that yeah. doesn't mean he didn't have one or two good ideas. Well, right. Well, you can't... You can't Here's here. This is a great debate and not one that we're going to have today because we can get back to our story. You can't be Hitler, Mussolini, Nixon. Uh, Boy, I feel like I want to defend Nixon a little bit. Hirohito, I don't think he deserves what's going on. Hirohito, right now. without having some just a structural ideas that make sense in terms of leadership or uh, policy. I'm just going to throw you the you life preserver right their, now you strip and them get of you their, back you, into the boat no, I just say, of the I just show. Say, if you strip them of their uh, of their ultimate use as, as, as mechanics. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? C- kind of. Kind of. Yeah, let's let's. Good luck with your book <laughs> of you know little pro tips based on Hitler, Nixon, and Mussolini and Emperor Hirohito. Okay, These, okay, so this is that they didn't they didn't get everything wrong. So many wrong. copies at Urban Outfitters. Yeah, pro I, tips from the oh my god, pro tips from hateful people. Yeah. Yeah, good. I- yeah, good. I- good <laughs> like ideas. You're, you're, good ideas from bad people. I wish people could see how uncomfortable you are just having this conversation. Well, I'm just worried. You know, nowadays know. you say one wrong thing. I should, but that's. But this goes back to what I was trying. The point I was going to make yeah. was, like, we would be lucky if there were enough people listening to this that I could get in some kind of trouble. But because right now it is the, just the true fans. I think that's Only the, the way Dave and I always felt about walking the Only room. Only the believers are listening right now. Yeah, because if, if enough people listen to walking the room, Dave, for sure, and I probably should have been punched one or two times. Well, but people, I mean, I ran into Dave down in Melbourne at the comedy festival, and he was down there doing his other, th- his new thing. Like he, he connects to people who like him, and then the people who don't like him, they're, he's, they're not a problem for him, which is great. Well, no, that's, you know, the, the thing that, you know, being middle of the road does not do much. For, it makes people comfortable around you, but it doesn't make for much um, uh, much sport in watching. You know, people love... The edge of the uh, road. People well, they, like the edge of the road or the ditch. Or they just like an, they like an opinion. Like, like anything, that, anything that has um, uh, uh, two sides is interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, because people have taken sides. If they haven't taken sides, it's doesn't. It's not. There's no impact. Right. You know what I mean? If you play it down the middle, people are like, "Well, that's nice." You know what I mean? But if you're like, "I'm gonna do some Hitler pro tips," Hitler's pro tips. Then Hitler you got somebody tips. going, "He's not racist. He's saying a funny thing inside of a joke." Right. Somebody goes, "You can't fucking mention that guy and not be a racist." You I know don't what think I mean? it's a whole book, though. I think that's why you got to no, bring Mussolini a, and, well, and Emperor Hirohito into it. That's what they Nixon. said about he's just not that into you. So that's now I know it is a book. Oh, they said it was not. This is not a whole book. That's what they said. Every other publisher except the one that published us. They, somebody wrote back. This is barely a magazine article. Hmm. Mm. The world doesn't know. Trust me. If you think if somebody, don't let other people tell you whether your ideas are good or not. No, I. That's true. That's true. Don't. But I still tell them our idea. I got us right back. I got us yeah, right back. This good. is this is might be one of my this Thank might God, be one of the best ones we've done. Yeah, this could be one. Of, this is the you mean pa- episodes of my podcast yes. that we've done. Yeah. yeah, no, I'd stand by it. I mean, so far, so far, so it, good. It could go back. Let's not uh, get ahead. Yeah, of somebody yeah, right. gets lucky. They throw a ball. It hits the big circle, and we both go in the dunk tank. That could happen. Yeah, that's but, true. Uh, but we're not taking calls. So <laughs> the um, 
the idea is you and I do a show. Well, I, I so my dream was that the podcast would get popular. I bought the sound equipment because I thought I'll, I want to be able to do the live podcast, and and I and maybe I'd do it in a comedy club while I'm doing a gig as one of the other nights or a later night, or maybe I'll find some other place. So I got I bought the speaker. It's not a expensive, but it's reasonable. So I have the sound system, and so now my thing is like I could do a show anywhere. And we were talking about new ways to do shows for people who actually want to see us. Because sometimes comedy clubs, they're giving away so many tickets to people who don't know what they're going to see. And those are, th- those shows can be fun to do shows for those people. But I want to do shows for people who want to come and see what I want to do. And not that I want to do any kind of... Not, it's not going to be middle of the road, but it's not... I don't, I'm not into any kind of Hitler stuff. No, no, no. I would do that. I would cover that stuff. Uh, or not cover it. I mean, it, depending so we on come how we did it, you can custom order your... We do a show. We come out. We're funny. We talk. We have some topics. We, it's like, a, it's like I feel like this is the show that I that I would like to do. Okay. Where we go on tour. Well, first of all, we could do a little bit of our stand-up. If we're touring, if it's not going to be in the same place every week or, or around town here where people are coming again and again yeah. before we can write new material. But we, but we could go on a little tour of California where... Where we've got our own sound system. Mm-hmm. I even rudimentary consider taking lights. that up to Seattle because I know we could do very well in that from the yeah. bottom of from Medford all the way up to Vancouver. I bet and so we could get. We're looking to do from crowds from ideally a hundred people minimum, but we'd do a show for less if that's how many people showed up. But I think to make it work, there's got to be a hundred to a hundred to. 200 people more if they obviously if there's more interest but we right. I think we could make it work for 100 200 people yeah and uh, and we come out we've got some things that we're talking about uh currently and uh and so it's a, it's not improvised but we're having a conversation about stuff that's going on and then we're taking volunteers having them come up and uh, we cut their hair I've been cutting my own hair for years now. And I've just started, and I and I, if you know me or are a fan of mine, you know for a long time it's been my dream to, uh, well, I've had a few of them, but I want to uh, have a barbershop, uh, at least run one, but I'd love to cut there, and uh, it'd be great if I got had a barbershop but then wouldn't hire myself, and I had to cut it a different place. That's a good story. I think it would That would be kind of funny, right? Yes, except I don't think that it's the case that you wouldn't hire yourself. I think it's a case that you would fire yourself because you don't even want to stand out there and sell them a CD of your comedy show. No. So when you're cutting their hair, they're going to want to talk to you about whatever they want to talk to you about. No, but it, well, but no, that's what I'm there for. No, no, no. I get you onto Hitler. That's they're right. going to want to talk. <laughs> they're want to go, Greg. I got uh, relationship problems, oh and my you're God. like, Hey, Greg needs to talk to you about relationship problems like Hitler needed to invade Poland. <laughs> and, uh... Let me tell you something. The reason... Now, my, my agita about after-show stuff is all about the comedy club. I would happily do it here at a place where I felt like these are just our fans. Mm-hmm. These are just people that, you know, these are not random folks that I'm these people have invited us almost this hundred this group of 100 people have practically invited us yeah this is the comedy club is just a different world I don't and, well, I, my and, ex- I, and also there's so there's a lot of sometimes there's a lot of tickets that have been given away a lot of times there's aggressive people a lot of times there's negative people you know really? and I you just, had that after your show I've had a little negative and I've had a little aggressive and I've had definitely I also have had just space invadery things and I've had like Maybe and I need I, to watch you a little closer because I feel like there's something that you're doing that you 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 I, maybe you're doing something different that you shouldn't be. No, I think that people. Uh, I not just, to blame the victim, no, but what I'm saying is I never have that. I when I'm at the I gift think shop I get a drunker sh- I think I get a drunker crowd than you do. Maybe so. I'm at the gift shop. It's I mean there's drunk people at the show often, but people come up and it's it's mostly pleasant. People telling me I've been a fan of yours since here. I bought this and I I, haven't bought that. I just had a panic attack in Portland, and I really get nervous stomach about selling. I don't know what it is. You'll you'll you'll, maybe you'll be okay if we're doing it together. Yes, of course. And when I and when I play with the band and and we're all selling T-shirts afterwards, I have no problem with that. But there's something about the comedy club thing that I just and also I just like that time. You know, if I'm going to a place and doing one show, 
and then mm -hmm. we got the rest of the night and we can talk and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I get nervous when people ask me to go have a drink with them or want to do more. I have a hard time cutting the relationship off. I don't know how to make my own boundaries. Never follow a hippie to a second location. I mean, that's... Yeah, right. I never... That's right. from 30 Rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> You'd never want to go. You don't want to leave the club with... No, people. yeah. I, but I'll, I'll sit down with them I, sometimes and talk to them. Yeah, no, and I love... And I, yeah, I love... I love people. I generally, it's not as bad as I think, but I have had, I used to have it when we had to go to, um, uh, to the HBO, the, what are they called? Emmys. Like we uh -huh. get invited to the Emmys and I couldn't, I was like, I can't fucking go to this. I can't, I don't want to see people. I don't want to think about my career. I don't want to, you know, I just can't do it. I, there's certain, there are certain crowd situations that really make me nervous because I have no control over them. Mm -hmm. This, I felt, would feel like I had a modicum of control. And also, because they sit, came to see a very specific thing that we're doing, mm -hmm. you know? But, but uh, yeah, I've always had it. I've always had it. Um, just, you know, that's Okay, hard. well, we're not going to worry about that. You're not concerned about it, so I'm not going to be concerned about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not concerned about it. In the case it. of this. So, no, no, no. Yeah, this would be a different thing. Can you remember back to when we were at the kitchen and we were going to come in here and start talking about it? Because I feel like we got distracted. If there was a lot of waffle talk. Then we got on to Hitler and Nixon. So you bought a, you bought a sound system, right. and it's really good. It's really good. And it's one of those ones you can just pack up and put in the back of your car. And it, it sounds just like you're in any any club, really. And it can just be in your living room kind of thing. It's yeah. a, it's, a, um, it's, it's an all-in-one uh, comedy club, uh, anywhere you want it situation. So we had talked about cutting hair and that kind of stuff. And then I had said to you, that because of recent events and because my, you know, I'm, I have to consider where my career is going, my wife had said, um, maybe you should go to barber college like you want to, uh, which it takes a year. And she said, my only worry is that you can't see well enough to do it. Because you've got, uh, what's it called? The uh, uh, macular, macular degeneration. degeneration. Yeah, and I'm like both near and farsighted. It's just, everything's a blur when the glasses come off. But with the glasses, I'm, I feel like I'm fine. And can I you, my... can, do you get a headache and, and stuff when you take them off? Or no, I just okay? can't see anything. Uh, but I've got do a little tint. Do, is, but... that, is that just because you're cool or do you, do you need the tint to... No, I need I, the tint for two reasons. One, the, the most, one of them is vanity because my lenses are so thick that my eyes look silly. They're massive. Oh, you look like that crazy yeah. cartoon, they look, uh, yeah, the they racist look really, Chinese yeah, guy. Yeah, I just, they just look huge. And the other one is, is yes, there are times when too much light just uh, uh -huh. blinds me, and I can and I just see spots, mm -hmm. and that's the macular degeneration, and that doesn't happen that often, but this prevents it. This feels like having my eyes in cool water. Uh -huh. It just feels better. So um, I wish it was a cool thing. I wouldn't. I don't have the courage to be that cool. But. It has the side benefit of, of being a cool thing. And sometimes I don't like it, though. I see pictures and I go, you look like a douchebag, but I can see. So, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? The, the ones I like are the blue. I think you're uncomfortable with your own coolness, which is, I, I take some balls to say that because you're wearing a friggin' giant skull ring. This was a gift so from this. Uh, oh, no, I, the, the, oh, the skull ring. I, the skull uh, ring was from my niece, and I love it. We great. bought it in a gift shop in Hawaii, and it's made of sterling silver. And I was at a big event the other night. I went to a wedding, and uh, uh, a very famous jeweler came up to me and said, where did you get that ring? Is that silver? And I said, no, it's a... I mean, I believe you can just buy that right off the internet. It's stainless steel. This is stainless steel? Yeah, yeah. Can, it, can yeah, I? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool ring. Oh, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. I like it. And I, um, uh, you know, because the rest of me is, I dress pretty, you know, just regular. But I, uh, no, you that's just need true. a couple of key pieces. Yeah. And, then, and then you've also got uh, tattoos and the glasses and your own haircut. Anyway, so we're traveling. So anyway, so what I we're said to Jake show. was, I said, we should do the hair. I mean, you said, let's do the haircut thing. And I said, yes, because what I think I'll do is legally we can give haircuts. What was it? We tried My to, understanding tried to is out. that you can only get in trouble for cutting people's hair if you're charging them. So we're charging people for a ticket to the comedy show. And then we're taking volunteers to see if anybody would like to have their hair cut during the comedy show. Right. And then we need to know what we're going to be talking about to each other and to them during the haircuts. And the, I mean, that is, that's the slight bugaboo of this whole plan is that we actually do have to write the show that we're going to do. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, um, some of the things we might say are fuck look out. 
for his ear. Where what you know stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. Well, there's going to be, be there's going to be I'm over I'm I'm over my head. Yeah. Barbering you right I'm going to bring somebody a thing. I go just hold. This is for the blood. You just have to lean forward a little bit. Um, the uh, I will probably only use clippers uh, and mm -hmm. do fades and mohawks. This is the problem with my hair cutting skills is I use the Floby and so it's, I don't ever, I've never even seen a Floby in action. It's loud. Well, we can do that after this. We may have to come back out after you hear me, after you see it. Yeah, I have to see it because I, I only I've only ever heard of it, heard of it. But but anyway, what I said was I'll go out and and we'll do this tour and I'll get some idea of uh, or not whether I can do this, whether I actually mm -hmm. have an aptitude before I go running off to barber college. I want to know if I like being in people's heads and uh, and, uh, and uh, helping them. I mean, because I, you know, I know I, I love the, you know, I love uh, talking about, you know, style and uh, I have a whole theory about how clothes and uh, everything work. But uh, uh, yeah, so that would be the idea to do. We got to come up with a snappy title for it. We will. We can't call it barbershop because that's already uh, some successful movies. But uh, yeah, we could. Yeah, we so could we need call a, it. We need Greg a title. And Jake won't cut you. <laughs> well, I, let's not. Is that won't. too much of it? That, does that feel like we, that's a promise we can't keep? I would say. I'm I mean, trying, neither of us are going to. Hey, this is a good. This is a good title, I think, and it's based slightly. It, it also kind of applies to your fame area with the relationships. I'm trying not to hurt you. Oh my God, that's pretty great. I'm trying not to hurt you. I'm trying not to hurt you. And but then, we have to mention the. Bar I feel like the barbershop thing needs to be in it as well. I don't know if. I guess if we both stood there in like it, it would be good. We have to take a photo for it. I think yeah, we have to take a photo, and, and we should smocks. both be. We should both be wearing the barber smocks and the, well yeah yeah barber smocks, clippers. So do you do you know anybody who has well, a also, barbershop where we can go and get the get our picture taken? I'm sure we don't yeah. need that. We could just have the. We could just have the barber snuff. We could do it at an ice cream place because I always feel like the barbershop quartets. But always... we also could just do it in. A, we could also because we're men without a home. We could do it in an empty lot. We can do it in a, on a beach. We could do it anywhere because we're not. We're not. We don't have a shop. We're bringing the shop to you. Oh, garage! If we, we oh could my god, just put your garage, garage door up with all your stuff in there. Why, that your your store in there. Why not right now where we are? <laughs> yeah, this looks. This like is a exactly garage. it. This this, like... this this is. I mean, this is you know. Uh huh. Um, this is perfect. Yeah, so that would be that would be it. Um, uh, the barbershop, you know, whatever it's referred to as the barbershop tour right now. Yeah. Um, but um, but that would be it. So you would come out. We would hear comedy. We would do our, some of our sets. We would uh, then get someone to come up from the audience, and we would cut hair and uh, and see how it goes. And then Jake and maybe even me will have a few items. Uh, for sale afterwards, uh, in your foyer. Yeah, be hanging out. It'll be hanging out. I think there's got to be a little bit of our act or or material kind of stuff oh, that for we sure. would do, but not a lot, you know. So, well, think of it this way: one of us goes out and does twenty. The other person goes out and goes twenty, and then we do twenty minutes of a haircut as an hour. Yeah. Well, I was even thinking. Yeah, I was thinking that or. And then we've got, I feel like maybe a little bit less even. And and then we've got uh, topical items from the news. And then when we were cutting the person's hair, we're getting a little biography of them. You know, yeah, right. You're like, and who I, are you? Where are you from? How's everything going? Are you, you know, little relation people? What do people talk about when they're getting their hair cut? They talk about their relationships, you know, which not to put you right into your yeah, strong no, no, no. suit. But, that would be fun. But yeah. But so so it, it appears, unless we get three microphones, the person cutting can only just talk off mic. It'll be a small enough theater. But then you would have the mic if I was cutting, and then the person who was inter being interviewed, they'd have Yeah, I think well, the, the person who's cutting has got a lavalier mic on, and then the, then the other person has got a handheld, and they're doing the interview back. I'm talking, you're talking, right. I'm talking, you're talking with right. the person who's getting their hair cut. Right. And we may find at some point that we can just, I think by the end of this, if we if we get good enough, it, we should just throw people up there in the chair and be able to just do the whole thing talking while we're cutting hair. Just All barbering. Well, let's face it also, I feel like at least with the Floby haircuts, 
the amount of time that it takes to do it is pretty like I, I can knock out one of those in pretty short order. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. So so you're talking a lot and then you're doing a little and then you're talking some more and then you're doing a little. Right. Because right. also you got to agree. Like it's ten minutes because I Jake know I are, so that's the, my own hair. I'm cutting my own hair, so I don't have to have a conversation with myself about what it's. What are your goals? Like, what do you want? How do you want this to look when we're done? I know that already. Well, I think what we do is we'll probably sketch up a couple of the haircuts, and we'll give you an option. And because we're not, neither of us are. You, you, do you use scissors with yours? Mm, no, a little bit of trimming the ear the side ear area. Right, but you could do that with clippers and we could say that we're not bringing any scissors. I don't know what we get out of saying we're not bringing any scissors because I want to bring it. Well, I want to bring scissors. Well, because the scissors, I think without, with, with no scissors, it means people won't, there's a pretty good chance they won't get cut. Well, when I say I'm trying not to hurt you, I feel like that means more if there's a possibility that I might hurt you. So I feel like at one point... We want to just get a straight razor out just to show people, like, look, I have this, but I'm just keeping it in the bag. That's not a bad idea. All right. Here's some other dangerous barbering tools that are not even going to get into play today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of people listening to this right now going, no way am I ever going to go to that no, barbering hey, show. No, forget. There's a, and all there... I can say to them is, like, if I think it's good for you to stay away. And I would say, I would disagree because I think that, that still, despite its popularity, the, po- the podcast community is still a pioneering community. There, there, there are people that um, uh, want, they want to have... Uh, uh, an adventure like that. They want to. Oh, they want to say Greg Barrett gave me the same hair he had uh, when he this had, podcast, was on dog pills. And, I am pioneering. You know, I'm out. I've found. I've found the backwater eddy of podcasting. Yeah, and the I'll people be, who are listening to this. These are people. We're going to go hand fishing. Yeah. No. I we're going to do barbering maybe, and then I feel hand like, fishing. I still feel. I'm still feel like it has to have. I feel like the t- I like the title. I think it's smart. Oh, we I'm haven't gonna, agreed on the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's not that's not. But I think I'm going to bring some chalk. You know what? Um, uh, there is chalk that you can use to color people's hair, and they'll stay colored for like two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll bring oh, some colored chalks. Yeah. So, okay, well, I feel- and if you're a real barber and you're not going to turn us in, we'd love it if you came to the show. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hmm. Maybe we bring a real barber so that he can charge for haircuts and we just take a cut because we're renting him a chair in our shop. Oh, my God, that'd be hilarious. Like he, we just want to have haircuts. Look, Jake and I just need to have haircuts happening while we're doing While this. we're talking. It makes me... It's how I relax. But that's what's great about the movie Barbershop. If you, if you watch the barber... There's a new one that you can watch in the movies in the seat on your airplane, and that's yeah. how I just watched Barbershop, the next cut. Yeah. It's really funny. The Barbershop movies are funny. Well, you could do a thing where you were saying, like, we pay the barber out of our fee. Let's say we just give him a flat, you know, uh, 50 bucks. And then you can pick. You get a Floby, you can get a faux hawk, a mohawk, a buzz cut, or you can just get a haircut. Mm-hmm. Just a regular old haircut. The, he will not talk, the barber. He will not get to talk. He doesn't get to talk. No. Yeah. And he can be local. We've got to draw the line somewhere. Oh, yeah. He is not going to do... He's not going to talk. Well, we're pro- well. I got. I think the odds are good that we're going to get a barber who is a good talker, and so maybe he'll talk. So, okay. So, we've got... I feel like we've got a good concept for this show, and then we got to... We, we don't want to talk about the specific writing of the what's going to happen during the show... Now, because that, then we're giving a, then we're, we don't want to show too much of our hand, but we're, we're laying the groundwork. The people are listening here. They're saying, man, I want to come to that barber show. Our next step is where are we going to do the first barber show? Now, we could do it with my sound system in the driveway of your new place that you're moving to. We could do it. I can't, I can't do it here. And obviously, you can't do it at your house either. So we got to decide do we want to try and do this at a place? Where there's already a place, like uh, would we would we say to someone who had a venue that we know we want to try this, or or do you think we'd be better off doing it at a? I at think a, it should never lodge? start in any place that's conventional. I think we should, if someone had a gallery space, a loft space, a. Um, okay, we're gonna take a walk. We're gonna eat lunch. Yeah. This I feel like we're at a good stopping place now. 
Yep. And we can talk more later if, on this if we want, or this can be the end after we we have to say some funny things at the end to, to make it good. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we'll take a walk. I've also got the Moose Lodge, which I don't think we have time to go. I don't think it's open right now, but the Moose Lodge is a place that I haven't been in for a while, but I'm a member. Right. Um, that sounds like the right place already. I want to just go there. I want to be a member. Yeah. It's a weird... I, I haven't been there for years, so I don't know what it's like right now, uh-huh. but it's been weird. It sounds good. If not, we'll start... Up. Maybe this will start our own lodge, but... I think the time is right for... I can't... So, I joined the Moose Lodge when John Ross, uh, who, I'm, who I've done his life story, and I've just got to listen to it and edit it for the podcast, because he's had a great career, but he was... He's, he is my best friend, was my best friend, now he's moved away. But he joined the Moose Lodge when he was having his 40th birthday party. And that that was where you could rent a place and have guests cheaper than hiring another hall. You know, you, you become a member of the Moose Lodge and you're allowed to use the facility. And so he joined then, and so I joined because we were friends, and it was like we're going to join this funny club for that older men. It's a thing that older... But they, their thing is we need young guys like you. We were young guys. You are a young guy at 40 at the Moose right. Lodge. And uh, we need young guys like you. And then John got involved, and there were all these economic issues, you know, because they wanted everything to be cheap, and they didn't want to pay more money. They had a steak dinner that included a steak, a potato, a vegetable, and then coffee, and it was like $7. That's what they were charging people. So they were losing money because the cheapest steaks they could get, it, it was costing them... But they wouldn't raise the price because the members were revolting. So that so they're funding it out of the dues that people are paying who aren't people who even show up that then they would do this thing. Yeah. So it was really hard to get them to do things out of their comfort zone. Right. At the Moose Lodge. Well, the thing is, you, I, you, were, you were about to say, I think the time is right about this. And I have had many conversations with, you know, in my, you know, when I first started thinking that I wanted to have a barbershop a while ago, you know, the whole idea was to have a place that was really sort of a gathering spot for, you know, for dudes, really. Uh, and for and a place where, I, you know, in, in my version of it, um, you know, there's a, there's a, it's a, it's a no internet space for a while, you know. And you come in and, you know, uh, uh, there's uh, everyone, uh, everyone employed there is over 40. Uh-huh. Over 40. So that you have a place to get wisdom from people who are a little bit older than you, you wouldn't hire young people because uh, the turnover is too but, great. But you, but young people can go. They should. They should want to go. Young men should want to go and go. They should want to go. Help me with my marriage. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about my fucking my mortgage, my marriage, my you know what, well, my career direction, like that kind of thing, where you get a bunch of guys. Uh, you know, very similar to what you're talking about. That's what those lodges were for. They, you know, that somehow they do good in the community, but you. Have a gathering space because I think men more than ever need a place to go talk, and they're not going to go do it at a bar or any, you know. Well, my problem as a man of a certain age who feels like he's figured some. Oh, I mean, the joke that I did in my act was I feel like finally now I know I know some shit, and no one gives a shit. Right. The problem isn't me having things to say. The problem is getting finding people who want to listen to them. Thank you. This is a good time to say thank you to the listeners. We're listening. Yeah, no, no, thank you. No, I'll tell you, but I'm going to tell you this. It has changed. It used to be women asking me for advice and stuff after shows. I get, it's men. And a lot of times it's just a comic on the road. Men come to me all the time with their relationship problems, with, you know, just to talk about career stuff, um, you know, just to talk, just to talk. And marriage is a big one. And kids is another one. Okay, so let's throw this out right now, because there are people listening to this. If you have questions that you would like us to address at our barbering show, whether you can come or not, that's another question because right. it may be cost prohibitive for you to fly to wherever we are. Right. But uh, if you have some ideas of things that we could talk about in the barbering show, please send send me an email, jake at jakethis.com, or you can at tweet me if you want. But then that's a short question. It's easier if you email me. And thanks to the people who've emailed me um, questions about other things that I asked, and I'm getting around to that. And um, I will have a space, so I am ostensibly, so Greg, gregorybarrent.com, that is going to be the home of everything that I do, it's just gregorybarrent.com, it's just, it's just a, ba- it's just a very, very, very basic, there's news and my tour dates, that's it, and a get on the mailing list thing, and I will have an email address for you, and that's it. I'm so gonna, I don't think I need 
to spell jakethis.com, but I think you need to spell Gregory Barron. Yeah, 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 uh, G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T. Um, that H and that D are just... There's just too many consonants in there. Isn't it? Do you feel like, do you feel like it's trouble? Oh, it's complete Has it trouble. been a problem in your yeah, life? always. Yeah. It was a big mistake. I just could not arrive at something I could live with that wasn't my last name. I mean, I yeah, no, I get it. without changing both names. And you went Gregory, though. Now, you don't go by Gregory, do you? Um, sometimes when people say it, but not, no, only, only family members. But I lost gregbarrett.com. And then you had it, and then you lost it. Yeah, I had it, and then I lost it. So um, because there are now quite a few Greg Barrons in the world, so I like GregoryBarrons.com. It's still the one that comes up if you put in Greg Barrett. And um, uh, yeah, so it's that's my place on the internet, GregoryBarrons.com. For now, um, for now. I uh, no, for good. No, I'm. T- I, I have. We got to no, get you. I, I I have a very big theory about all that stuff. I I am I am going to try to. I really, because I have seen zero upside. The only thing I've ever done that's had an upside was the podcast. Uh-huh. And I, but even tweeting about the podcast didn't do anything. It's tweeting is for I tweeters. find tweeting tweeting is for tweeters. And my and I and I don't like my Facebook page. And I don't I don't. I like my it. Facebook page. Yeah, I don't have any activity on there. And then I don't like having Facebook either. So G best I, uh, I uh, G best dot com. What is that? That's my that's that's the website that I'm buying to, for you. G best because it's G B E S T. Oh, G B E S T. I like that. I would. I um. I just wanted to have um. Uh, yeah. I just want to find the one place and go. Look, I'll. Yeah, no, I'll I get post it. Here and that's can... why that's my website's jakethis.com and then I'm at Jake This on Twitter and Jake This podcast because it's. I decided. Yeah, that's good. I thought I picked a good one, but I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, so are we going for to eat lunch yeah. now? Yeah. What kind of food do you want? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe like um, a sandwich. I don't okay. know. Okay, we'll figure it out. Yeah, figure it out. I feel like this was good. I think it was really good. Solid work. Solid work. I yeah. started. I'm not. I'm not positive about the ending. Oh, I thought the ending was good. Would it, do yeah. you? Can I tell you something? Every time when I when I did the other podcast, there were just days where I was like, "That was the worst thing we've ever done." And people were writing, "They go, probably my favorite podcast you've ever done." People get tired. People but get tired too. Don't. People get tired. Yeah, and they don't. They don't care how it ends. They're not looking for a. This is not a comedy set. They're not looking for a fucking closer. This is the other thing. They thought it ended, and it's not over right now. Well, they, they thought that talking. about half. Yeah, 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 we're still talking. What's that? Is that a fish hook? That's like one of those Pacific Island. Uh, That's right. I got this from my aunt who lives in uh, uh, in uh, Hawaii. On Very Oahu. nice. Okay, yeah. I want to. All right, Hawaii. That was the other thing about you moving to Hawaii. Okay, that's going to make noise. Where you're doing? I'm going to turn it off. I'm oh, turning sorry. it off. Okay, this is the end. This is the end. Do you have any final words? Goodbye. Okay. I can't hear you unless you talk into the machine. You know, when Dr. Jim Rain screams like that, it just makes me happy. It just makes me happy. Uh, I hope you're happy. Hey, so while this was playing, you know, this was me. I had to play it again in real time. The way the technology of this works is I I just had to play this again. And while that was happening, I went to the, the I went to the uh, textile recycling center at the City Hall of Santa Monica, which is where I, I live. Please don't stalk me. Um, but if you want to, it's going to be a while before I get to the textile recycling center again. So I took some textiles there to be recycled and came back. And one of the things that happened on the road, we're all in this together, but please, oh my God. So I'm driving in my car, I have the car today, because I'm picking my mother up at the airport in a minute, which is why I can't talk too long right now. Um, So I have the car today, and I'm driving, I'm going straight, and coming towards me is a woman on a bicycle, and she's in the left-hand lane getting ready to turn left. But when you're on a bicycle... You in the wor- you're in the world of cars and traffic. You have to obey those rules. So, she's on the other side of the the intersection, waiting to turn left, and I'm in the car going straight towards her. And she decides, I don't want to be on a bicycle and have to obey the wor- world of bicycles and vehicles. I want to be a pedestrian and do what I want. She gets off the bike and just steps into the crosswalk and walks right in front of me, 
to, to make her left turn to get to the corner. And I'm like, what the hell? I, you know, it's it was the weirdest thing. Like she turned from a bicycle a vehicle into a pedestrian in a second and just assumed that I was not going to kill her. And it turned out to be a safe assumption. But if she didn't, luckily, she gave me barely enough time to realize, oh, uh, that person is not doing what anyone thought they would do. And and she, in her mind, didn't question that what she was doing was dangerous at all. And this was a grown-up lady, I should point out. You know, there's plenty of young people doing ridiculous things. But this woman could have been 35, 40 years old, uh, and she was doing a very dangerous thing. So be careful out there, ladies and gentlemen. Take care of yourselves. Don't give up. There'll be plenty of time to give up later. And don't do some dumb thing that gets you killed. That can happen, ladies and gentlemen. Accidents happen every day. Do not cause one if you can at all help it. But if you're on the other end and you see someone doing something stupid, please don't kill them. Please don't kill them. Let them go. Let someone else teach them the hard lesson. You don't want to be a murderer. You don't want to carry around that for the rest of your life. And uh, let's all, uh, we're all in this together. Be nice to each other. I will talk to you next week. Uh, I hope. I hope that's what's going to happen. I feel like, I feel like I got my groove back. I hope you get your groove. I hope you've got your groove. I hope you never lose your groove. I hope you perpetually maintain your groove for as long as ye both shall live. Thank you, listeners. See you next time. Heard it. Heard it. Heard it. Heard it. Heard it. Heard it.